Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here doing a class on the Days of Remembrance. And in this class, I'm going to show you the relationship between June the 19th and the Days of Remembrance. We're going to be explaining what those days are and their relationship to the sacred calendar, that 364 day calendar. It is the Days of Remembrance that make up those extra four days. So let's get started. Now, the first verse that I want to bring your attention to is over here in the book of Enoch in chapter 81. This is verse 6, which is saying, Respecting these men greatly error, and do not compute them in the computation of every age. This is talking about the four extra days, the seasonal days that are on the sacred calendar. We can read about that in verse 5, but verse 6 goes on to say, for they greatly err respecting them, talking about those four days. Nor do men know accurately that they are in the computation of the year. Now, this is why you hear a lot of people saying that the sacred calendar has 360 days. It is because they've forgotten about these four days that Enoch is talking about. It goes on to say, but indeed, these are marked down forever. So these days, even though we have forgotten them, are on the sacred calendar forever. Now notice this part. It says one in the first gate, one in the third gate, one in the fourth, and one in the sixth. Now to understand what he's talking about as far as these gates are concerned, we have to go back in the first chapter of this book of the Revolutions of the Luminaries of Heaven and study where Enoch is talking about the sun entering into these different gates or these different portals as they're sometimes called. You see in verse 2 that he's saying that the first law of the luminaries is that the sun and its light travel through these gates. You have gates on the east and you have gates on the west and that's what verse 3 is talking about. In verse 4 we learn that there are actually six gates in which the sun and the moon are traveling through. And we see down in verse 9 that the sun enters the fourth gate in the first month. Now, we would recognize these gates or these portals that he's talking about if we was looking at an equatorial sundial like the one you see on your screen. You see the celestial pole in the middle will cast a shadow in one of these rings. Well, each one of these concentric circles represents one of the gates or one of the portals. So the way they did it back in ancient times is they would see the shadow cast in one of these particular gates to know exactly what solar month they were in. This is a diagram that were drawn up for the Hillbilly Homestead sundial, which is made out of an old direct TV satellite dish, which explains the shape. But you see the portals here with the celestial pole being in the middle and the horizontal line going through it representing the path the sun will take on the equinox. The rest of these areas between the lines represents each gate. So back over here in the book of Enoch, we can see how long the sun remains in each one of these gates before it transitions to the next. We see that the sun enters the fourth gate in the first month and remains there for 30 days in verse 12. Then in verse 15, we can see that the sun enters the fifth gate and remains there for 30 days. And then in verse 17, we start to recognize a pattern as the sun enters the sixth gate, but this time it's staying there for 31 days. So back over here in Enoch chapter 81, we now understand what Enoch was talking about when he says that each one of these days of remembrance are added for each quarter of the year. So if we continue this pattern over here in Enoch chapter 71, we'd see that each month has 30 days and then you have an extra day added at each quarter. Now when we come over to this date calculator and we start in March the 20th or the spring equinox and add 91 days to it, it ends up on June the 19th. Now, that date that Enoch is talking about can be found down in about verse 20 when it's talking about the sun once again entering the sixth gate. So what that looks like is after the spring equinox, the sun enters the fourth gate where it stays for 31 days and then enters the fifth gate 
where it stays for 30 days. And then it enters the sixth gate where it stays for 31 days. And that 31st day is June the 19th. Now, it gets real interesting when you look up some of the facts around June the 19th. There's actually a holiday around that date, which officially is called the Juneteenth National Independence Day, but historically is known as Jubilee Day and Emancipation Day. And it is celebrating the freedom of the American slaves. June the 19th or Juneteenth is the 91st day after the spring equinox. It is the day which the sun enters the sixth portal on the Enoch solar calendar. In ancient times, the Hebrew forefathers used sundials to track the day we call Juneteenth. When the sun struck Juneteenth, the priests and the Levites would await the following new moon. That day is the second day of remembrance of the year. All four days of remembrance are important. The significance of Juneteenth is that it brings attention to the second seasonal day for which there is no other reminder. The first day of remembrance the first day of the first month is significant because of the temple cleansing and preparation for Passover. The third day of remembrance, the first day of the seventh month, is Rosh Hashanah, which needs no reminder. The fourth day of remembrance is the seventh day of the Feast of Dedication, or Hanukkah. But other than the day of remembrance, the first day of the fourth month has no special appeal and is often forgotten. Juneteenth helps to remember the day of remembrance that is most forgotten. Now let's come over to the book of Jubilees in chapter 6, where there's more specifics on these days of remembrance. Now when we drop down and look at verse 23, it says, And on the new moon of the first month, and on the new moon of the fourth month, and on the new moon of the seventh month, and on the new moon of the tenth month, are the days of remembrance. So whereas Enoch was telling us which solar month these days of remembrance fall, here Noah is talking about the same events, but he's telling us specifically what day is actually the day of remembrance. And we see that it falls on the new moon when the sun is in those particular gates. So that would be the fourth gate, the sixth gate, then the third gate, then the first gate, whenever the sun's shadow is being cast in one of these gates and there is a new moon, that is the day of remembrance. Now back over here in Jubilees, it says, and the days of the seasons of the four divisions of the year. So looking back at this diagram, we see those four days added here as the seasonal days. These are the days that Enoch was talking about that men greatly err because we forget about these days and we don't remember these days throughout the year. In that same chapter 81, Enoch goes on to name the conductors of these four quarters as if there are angels over each one of these four seasons. The first name was Melchel, the second was Ahimelech, the third is Melial and Nerel. Then Jubilees goes on to say, these are written and ordained for a testimony for forever. Now, that's the same thing that Enoch was talking about. This never changes on the sacred calendar. Now, if this all sounds unfamiliar, it's because we've forgotten the days of remembrance. But now look at verse 24, what Noah did after receiving this information. It says, and Noah ordained them for himself as feasts for the generations for forever. So Noah proclaimed feast days on each one of these four days of remembrance. It says, so that they have become thereby a memorial unto him. And maybe this is what we all need to do is turn these into feast days, days when we would have a barbecue or some type of event to remind us of these days of remembrance. Now, What's interesting is when you continue to read in this same chapter, Noah seems to be making a connection between these four days of remembrance and the events around Noah's ark. Like in verse 25, it says, and on the new moon of the first month, he was bidden to make for himself an ark. And on that day, the earth became dry and he opened the ark and saw the earth. 
So this is talking about the day of remembrance in the first month. Then you see in verse 26, it's talking about the fourth when it says, and on the new moon of the fourth month, the mouths of the deep of the abyss were closed. Now, I'm sure all of this has some type of symbolic meaning. But then when you look on, it says, and on the new moon of the seventh month, all the mouths of the abyss of the earth were open and the waters began to descend unto them. And then in verse 27, he talks about the day of remembrance in the 10th month when he says, and on the new moon of the 10th month, the tops of the mountains were seen and Noah was glad. So what I believe we could do, and maybe we'll do it in another class, is compare these days of remembrance and these accounts in Noah to what we know around the sacred calendar. Like, for instance, how this new moon in the seventh month is actually the day of the memorial of blowing of trumpets. So is there some relationship to what we read in Noah's story where it says the mouth of the abyss were opened and the waters began to descend unto them? Well, I think it's definitely a good idea to go in and see if there is some correlation between these events and what we can expect in our spiritual life. So now you must be wondering, OK, when is this day of remembrance? Now, again, like we talked about toward the beginning of this video, an important marker is June the 19th, Juneteenth, because it is the first new moon that falls after June 19th. That is the day of remembrance. Now, the last thing that I want to talk about in this video is the marking of the sundial during these times. Now, we've been talking about Juneteenth, and on that day, those of us who are working with sundials will mark that sundial throughout the day so that we can create this line on our sundial that will represent the sun transitioning through this gate. June the 19th is one day when we'll stand out by the Hillbilly Homestead sundial making marks about every 30 minutes or so. But we'll do the same thing on the other days in which the sun transitions these portals, like July 19th and August 18th. But the next gate in which we are expecting the day of remembrance will be after September the 18th and December the 18th. If we mark our calendar according to those 30, 30, and 31 day patterns, our elliptical sundial should look like this. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and close it out. If you got anything out of this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. But leave us a comment either way. And shalom.